Hello everyone! In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create your own Ghibli style battle maps using my custom art packs in Dungeon Draft. The particular art pack used in this video contains about 400 assets that you can download for free on my website crossheadstudios.com. Before I get into the tutorial itself, I'll show some of my own process on making these assets. But if you'd like to skip ahead, I've added chapters that will make it easy to skip to whatever part of the main tutorial you're looking for. Divided in three chapters, I'll go over using my custom terrain brushes, which have been updated to get the most out of each terrain type, with smooth blending activated, making it possible to create large empty fields without any repetition that you might find in normal modular terrain types. A second chapter that will delve into using pathways to create hard and soft edges for your terrains, for smooth transition between surface and the objects placed upon it. Making seamless designs has been the focus in this pack. While I won't get into it in a separate chapter, I'll also talk more about my creative process behind making trees and their shadows in the introduction. Another part of my design that focuses on smooth transitions for even better looking battle maps. And last but not least, I'll get into creating rivers and streams, which is something I've been wanting to perfect for quite some time, but took a bit longer to figure out how to optimize using the two tools Dungeon Draft has to offer. It's a part of creating maps a lot of people have been asking me about, and as I used to do most of it after exporting my maps from Dungeon Draft, but something I can now finally show you how to do from start to finish using mixture of tools Dungeon Draft provides. For now, however, I'd like to get back into my introduction and talk a bit about the references and the process I used to get where I am with these assets. As mentioned, I refer to these assets as my Ghibli designs, mainly because a lot of the inspiration I used for it was drawn from watching their beautifully crafted animations. You see, I've spent a lot of my time looking at stills from the movies you see referenced here, like The Secret World of Variety and My Neighbor Totoro. My tree designs, for instance, went through an entire design process, having made dozens of variations and hundreds of attempts to get them looking quite right. This is something I have achieved not just from looking at stills from these fabulous movies, but also from looking at artists that have been inspired by Stu Ghibli Studios as well, learning from their process. A specific example that really helped me along was the art of Chinese artist Yoki. Getting a closer look at how they did their transition from light to shadow was very revealing. In combination with more simplified line work that I had done in the past, and going back to creating more texture based terrain designs. Something that I had learned from designing water for terrain brushes in Dungeon Draft is that to get the best results is to blend multiple layers of these terrains. For water, I did it to similarly depth. This led me to figure out that getting all the unique colors Ghibli artists use in a single terrain type, like grass, couldn't just be done in a single terrain tile, as it would lead to too much repetition. Using a terrain brush for each unique color featured instead was a solution. To get the most out of creating a single terrain type, like I will be doing with this grass in this example, is to work with a base color and a couple of variants. To achieve the best result for this, we'll turn on smooth blending option. Then we lay down our foundation and add a couple of dark and light touches here and there. I also have a clover texture which was inspired by a particular still from my to neighbor Totoro. Combining all the techniques described, we can create a 20x20 20 20 field of grass in an instant that doesn't display any of the visual repetitiveness I've had in previous designs. Next we'll add some dirt. And as you can see, I have a couple of variations for my dirt brush as well. I know we only have 8 slots to work with here, so I have to be smart in making my choices, but often we don't need more than 3 or 4 terrains to work with, and only a couple of them will be prevalent in our designs. The texture brush for my dirt terrain is called Pebbles, and it really helps bring out a lot more character in each area you'll want to cover with dirt. Especially useful when you place it near edges or close to any objects you place on this terrain type. 
Now, as always, I also have specialized terrain paths available in this pack. These mainly help blend terrain and objects. They're not necessary, but do help bring all the designs closer together. These paths are marked by the tag terrain in their name and often include versions with hard edges and soft edges, or with base versions and level versions to create cliffs or hills. Creating something like a height difference on my grass design is something that a lot of patrons have been asking me to figure out. And although I'm pretty happy with what I've designed here, it's always something I do plan on working further to perfect in the future as well. I often make sure to add multiple solutions to each problem, so I can see how people end up using them in their designs to learn from their thought process as well. I have my way of doing things, but you might see me include solutions that I've not used myself, like a tool to create custom waterfalls, which I plan on exploring more in some upcoming tutorials. Now, creating height difference in my third path, however, is something I've been getting closer to in this pack. Using the tools provided, we can use a transition from growth to shrinking to create little areas of height difference. Blending it into the terrain with a dirt brush behind and in front of our path here, and then adding a grass, a hard grass edge on top to make sure it's covered up. The same tool in combination with the hill option makes it so we can expand this hill upwards and create an entrance to a cave or a dungeon lurking beyond this map. To get the most out of these designs, we can use tools provided like the pebble tuck texture in the cave mouth, and later on add in some shadows or light that comes piercing through. Next I'd like to move on to my favorite update of this pack, and that is creating streams and rivers. When first we got Dungeon Draft, Water Tool was hard-coded with a black border which made it very difficult to create narrow streams without figuring out how to block about 5 feet of black edges on either side. With the border disabled, however, we can now use a very basic terrain path to enhance our stream, making it blend with the terrain it's part of and add details like ripples on the edge of our water path. I've also included some additional paths to detail the direction the stream is flowing, something I learned from watching San Trion, who used my original pathways for this exact purpose in a user-made map, a particular map which you can actually find on the Dungeon Draft section of my website, crossetstudios.com, in the User-Made Maps tab, a font of inspiration for any creator interested in using my art and also the location where I place all the maps that are submitted to the contests I run for map creators, including the one that I'll run with the art assets used in this video. Now that we've got a basic stream down, let's move on to drawing a large river, a task that requires us to combine a lot of tools we've just talked about, creating hills, grass edges and ripples of water to shape the edge of our river is something we've already figured out in the past and is nothing new in and of itself. The road to trying to perfect them, however, has been something I've been working towards for quite some time. There are some key factors you need to keep in mind when it comes to things like repetition and how the texture acts to being stretched out for a bend. Taking a lot of inspiration from other artists here was key to figure out a couple of techniques to test and see which lends itself most to the tool at hand. The key into creating a river, however, was what to do with the texture between the edges we had created. The water tool offers us a nice blend between two colors, which is useful, but also comes under strain from the way it's refracted. Here I come to the solution of using a water path that plays with the same variable of depth I had used for my water terrain designs. Using a textured edge on one end of the path and a soft blended edge on the other. This makes it possible to layer these edges with the blended edge and got a lot of texture on the other end where it wants to blend with our water tool. It's basically what I would do by hand when I touch up any water I use to create in Dungeon Draft after importing it back into Photoshop. A solution that is quite simple in its design, but one I think should do the trick quite easily. Adding in some specialized water objects to finish the job. 
Organizing my objects by their specialization and use with the other tools is also something you'll find I've updated in my most recent pack here. Adding objects for terrains, for paths, for walls, and for water. Although my basic water objects are designed with the standard water tool in mind specifically, I also have added in colorable water objects that make it possible to blend them with any color variant you intend to use yourself. For paths it's a lot harder, as it doesn't have any color options, so I try to make sure to include the most important ones. I think that's about it for this tutorial, and although it does include a lot more footage for you to take a closer look at how I place more objects and paths, I think most of them are self-explanatory. As mentioned, all of the assets used in this video are free to download on my website crossheadstudios.com. It features over 400 objects and dozens of paths, walls, terrains for you to try out. If you like what you see, you can try your chance at winning thousands more in a competition I'll be running with this pack for the next month and a half, possibly even winning a bunch of adventures, tokens and other prizes. Or you can just subscribe to my Patreon, the platform that has made it possible for me to create all the assets and perfect them in the process. I wouldn't have been able to make all of this content without the support of my patrons. Thanks for watching this video, and if you'd like to see some more techniques I've used in making of the modeler maps designed with this pack, be sure to keep watching. Or join me next time, where I plan on explaining how to create your own modular maps using Dungeon Draft, for both simple indoor maps and more complex outdoor maps. See you next time.